Hey, John here. Let me show you something else I'm working on here. Here's another one of these uh, camera booms that I put together. This one mounts up underneath a shelf like that on one big block. I'll show you the 3D model of that in OpenSCAD and get a closer view on that. It's uh, screwed into this uh, wooden shelf here with a, you know, a leg screw about that big. And uh, on here is a zoom lens. And up underneath here, I got a monitor on a hinge that I designed that I uh, then 3D printed the parts. And these two blocks that mount up underneath the shelf and then a long uh, piece of, of, of material that the monitor has these two mounting holes behind it in here that is, is screwed into. And I'll show you how to assemble this thing in a second. So as you can see here, uh, this makes a pretty good scope. I don't know if it's the best soldering scope. I would, uh, maybe if I got a 100 millimeter lens, this one's 60, 60. And I put the CS mount adapter in there, even though it's not supposed to be used with this lens, which makes it more like a macro lens, which gives you bigger images, right? So uh, anyway, uh, that's not too bad. I mean, this is a dip switch, an eight position dip switch. I caught a dip switch that was this big, you know? So it's, it's not bad. These are uh, 0603 parts. This little teeny, one of these little jeweler screwdriver things. And this here is a, what is that, a lattice, uh, this is an FPGA, a 144-pin uh, FPGA, you know, that pretty big on the screen. So it's not bad, not bad. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with the lens. It's not perfect. I get a little bit of a, you know, a spherical distortion. It's a little blurry on the edges here. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those get-what-you-pay-for kind of things. A $23 lens. Not bad, you know. And of course, it's zoomed, so you can zoom way out if you really want to, you get a bigger area. It's verifocal, so it won't hold its focus while you change the zoom. That's, you know, again, that's what you, what you pay for. It costs a lot more to get a zoom lens that's not verifocal. All right, so that, you know, you don't get more, more space on the screen, right? This is the block, all right, that I mounted up underneath the shelf that holds the camera boom. There's a countersink in here for the head of a carriage bolt that you use to squeeze this thing together. I got another video on camera booms and stuff like that. I'll put a link to it in the description below this video so you can see more about how these blocks get used and how I combine them together and have another like ceiling mounted boom and so on. Uh, this one should be obvious uh, in addition to that particular video. So inside here, a three quarter inch piece of conduit goes there. This is uh, cut for a quarter inch uh, uh, carriage bolt with a washer and a wing nut down there and you can just clamp it down around this pipe okay when you shoot a uh, lag screw into a shelf okay what you want to do is just cut a piece of um, uh, wax paper and put it between the top of this block and the shelf all right that way it'll slide around on the shelf it won't squeak and grind the wood and stuff like that okay it's just a little bit of a lubricant uh, the countersink on the head here, of course, is there so that the head, uh, the round dome head of the carriage bolt also doesn't uh, touch the bottom of the shelf so that you have a nice flat top right here, right up against that shelf, okay? So now let's look at the pieces that are needed to make the hinge to mount the monitor up underneath the shelf. This block here, there's two of them. There's a left and a right, and they are like, got a polarity to them. You change this number right here in the source code. It says make it a one, two, three, or four, depending on which part you want to render. The reason I did this is so that I can write a script and uh, in a make file that just runs the same SCAD file four times and renders each one of the four pieces that you'll see go together to make the camera. So if you change, oops, <laughs> hard to hard to type and talk at the same time. You put the number here, change it to two or whatever you want to do to make each one of the four separate blocks. As you can see, these are polar uh, have a bit of polarity to them. This distance here is is different. You know, these are not centered, right? So that so that when the hinge swivels, it doesn't knock into the shelf that is in this position over here when you screw this in. Okay, let's look at the other two pieces. Here's one of the pieces that fits behind the monitor. The monitor uh, bolts onto two pieces that are like this. This hole in the countersink here matches the screws that came with the monitors that I bought on uh, Amazon. I'll put a link to the monitor that I bought. I don't get any whatever royalties or revenues for anybody if you follow the link and buy one. Uh, it's just the cheapest one that I found that had the right um, connections and things for the cables that I needed to use. 
and you can see this this bump that sticks out on the end over there that fits into the uh, block that you just saw that ends up uh, uh, next to it on the left end. It creates this detent that'll hold it in a vertical position if I want to tuck it up underneath the shelf, which you saw underneath my scope shelf, all right? I'm going to mount another one of these under another shelf uh, for another part of my uh, workspace where I film my uh, hand-drawn uh, diagrams that are, <laughs> I like to think of it as my home whiteboard, uh, because <laughs> I tried doing whiteboards standing up and stuff. It was so annoying. It's easier to just take a piece of paper and, uh, draw on the desk with an overhead mounted document camera kind of a thing. Uh, but of course it helps also a lot if you have a preview monitor so you can see what you're doing. You don't wander off camera or something. So anyway, the two of these things together uh, mate the back of that monitor. And I made two of them because my print surface is only about 240 millimeters wide on my 3D printer. So I have to print it in sections, all right? So uh, there's the, uh, the right section and the left section. All right, so here is the uh, parts that make up the hinge. Okay, you got these two mounting blocks here, and they have a top and a bottom. If you look closely, there's this, this slot, the groove for the detent, right? The meteor side of the block goes up. So this block, this is the top of the block, and it's going to mount up underneath the shelf like this. This one will go this way on the other side, okay? Now, if you look inside here, you'll see there's a hexagonal. This one looks a little better, easier to see. You can see there's the hexagonal countersink in there. The idea is you take uh, a pair of nuts like this on this quarter inch threaded rod and you put it through the mounting block like so and you let one of the two nuts will go inside of the block, okay? The second nut won't go in there. If I put them both in there then and the lock without the corners lining up, it wouldn't go in, all right? Uh, of course, I could probably put a double countersink in there with a round one, but yeah, I'll leave that for somebody to... Generate a pull request on the GitHub design if you want to do that. Okay, now these two have a left and a right as well. So the one with the two cable uh, tie uh, access holes is the left, and this other one is the right. You slide these down on here. And you put this one on over there. You put the other end on over here. Now... Granted, it is a hexagonal uh, countersink on there, but once you put the washer on there, it doesn't matter. So you can either put nuts on both sides or not, or however you want to do that. It'll work either way. I want a wing nut because I'm going to go like this, and put a wing nut on there and spin it down. I want to be able to adjust the tightness on this so that if I want to take advantage of this detent thing and uh flip the monitor back because the monitor is going to mount onto this thing right it'll it'll get it'll set in those 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 grooves on these side nuts and it'll hold it up if i so want to do that all right now here's the monitor that i use a preview when i'm recording my stuff and it comes on this you know nice pad and you fold it up it kind of goes inside but it's this flimsy thing i'm constantly knocking into it it falls over it gets in the way so <laughs> thus the need to mount it up underneath the shelf just out of view here so if you look at how this thing is delivered you see these two screws in here they match these holes so we can recycle these they come out of there pretty easy there's just like cardboard or something like that you just take the cover off come on like so take these bolts out and we can recycle them take the monitor out of this now put this on top of here and put these screws in the holes, if you can get, no, that's upside down. All right, put them in the hole, kind of thread them in there. We feel it around a little bit, get it set in there, and screw them in. They don't have to be super tight, don't go nuts. You know, who knows, this, is, this monitor was bought mostly on price. <laughs> okay, it's the cheapest one they have. Don't expect these, uh, these mounting bolts to be super robust or anything like that, all right? Uh, if I can get it in there the right way, come on. Maybe this is the hardest thing you have to do. I don't know. Come on, get in there. There we go. Light it around until you feel it align up. Give it a good snug. And there you go. Now I have a hinge-mounted screen that can be mounted up underneath the shelf. Now these blocks here 
this whole size is the uh, size I chose because this is the right diameter for like a drywall screw. And this is about an inch long, get about a two inch drywall screw, and uh, you can uh, then mount it up on our uh, shelf. Pardon the light there, a little glare. If we tip up the camera, I'll show you where I'm working at the moment. Uh, the idea is to mount it up inside here like this, all right? It gets it off the, uh, the workspace and clears it from all these cables. And uh, this shelf down here, these are just a whole bunch of books and stuff up there. Uh, the bottom one just fills up with junk and pens anyway. So this is perfectly reasonable. I'll put this up in here. I want to get at the stuff in there. I'll tip it up like this, reach in, and let it flap back down. Then I got a preview monitor that's off my workspace and exactly what I want.